Welcome to another edition of Martin's Metal Art. Um, today we're gonna build a gate. We're gonna plasma cut a kind of a prefabricated design. I'm gonna show you how I do that. And uh, anyway, this is just a regular garden gate. I've got my measurements. I've got a rough opening. My RO is 50 inches. Uh, my height is 36 inches. Uh, we're going to use what I have laying around, which is a whole bunch of 2x2 two two, uh, 095 wall box tubing. Um, we're not going to paint this. We're not going to powder coat it. We're going to give it to the client and they can do whatever they want with it. Uh, they said they want to paint it. Anyway, I'm, I'm just going to uh, miter my corners. So my RO is 50, okay? And then, all right, so the one thing I wanted to show you about these is I've done enough of these to figure out that when that thing extends out, my measurement from there to there is uh, three inches. So it'll go three inches down to about, you know, two and a quarter. So when I take a rough opening like this, I've got 50 inches, right? So I'm going to minus three inches for the hinge. Now I'm at 47, all right. Then I'm, am I gonna put this on a plate? I'm gonna weld it to the post. Do I want some type of a gap between the post and the gate, you know, on the open side? Um, I'm gonna use a special latch that I'll show you a little bit later. Uh, anyway, 47, I'm basically gonna take in and count another half inch for, you know, so this thing can breathe over here. Uh, so um, I'm at 47, so basically th this point, you know, long to long or width to width or whatever is going to be 46 and a half. So now I'm going to cut those miters. This is 36 inches tall. That's not going to change as far as the width goes, of course. So that's 36 inches tall. That gives me an inch of clearance on the bottom. Uh, and we're good to go. So join me. Let's, let's make a gate. All right. Uh, I got my pieces cut. I've got my edges there, uh, sand and gravel, so I've got a solid flat work surface. Um, what else you need? You don't need anything else. Uh, so now we're going to mock this thing up as square as possible. So we never trust the saw on the 45s. So I go through a whole bunch of uh, these carpenter squares. Um, I weld this part without gloves. I'm not, uh, you know, welding it together uh, necessarily. I'm just tacking it together. And uh, the reason I'm not wearing gloves is so I can pick that thing up if it slips down. Uh, a lot of times I'll use like a big 12 inch speed square uh, that I can grab. Uh, one of these days I should just put a handle on this darn thing for squaring stuff up. But this is just going to be a tack tack. Now, if the earth is flat and I'm good, I now have myself
<laughs> I got a square gate. Uh, square gate frame. All right. So um, I am not going to weld this thing up yet because I've got a lot of stuff I got to add to this. And uh, the last thing I want to do is, is, you know, have that heat from those inside welds and everything else start fluctuating this thing around so I'm gonna tack it really good I don't want it to move uh, then I'm gonna get my sheet of metal and I'll show you the design we're gonna use uh, on this and go from there but I'm just gonna tack it make sure uh, it's gonna stick around but I don't want to apply a lot of heat to this thing not yet anyway the great Home Depot sells these uh, I call them old plastic bags Anyway, it's a recycled piece of plastic. It's got a really cool pattern to it. They took, they made, they took uh, redwood uh, four by four and made, you know, a nice little tr inside trim piece. And this is, these are like the fence panels. Um, I've done stuff like this out of metal before. It would cost them a significant more amount of money than, than buying this uh, nice little piece. It's fairly weather resistant. You know, I think it might gray a little bit, but. Uh, but anyway, it's it's pretty solid. But but the plan now is is you don't want a redwood, you know, necessarily a redwood fence uh, going to a redwood gate that the sun's going to beat the bejeebers out of. Uh, so the smart people out there would like a metal gate. Uh, but I'm going to match this pattern, and the pattern. I mean, this is 36 by I think it's five foot, 60 inches. Um, all I'm going to do is lay this down on a piece of uh, metal. I'm going to take my chalk and, and, and draw these designs in it and I'm going to come up with the same pattern that the rest of the, the property is built around and it's going to look really, really cool. All right, got my interior part of my gate all chalked out. So I want to show you, um, get this dude to focus. Uh, this is the outside or inside frame of the gate itself so what I'm going to do is cut this line here and I'm, I'm added these tabs and the reason I keep I've added these tabs is because uh, this is going to be painted and that's going to be a real simple little weld on each side here and there and inside outside uh, inside outside anyway um, I don't want to have this thing if, if this was going to be rusted I would make this thing fairly tight and I would just put a little zip you know with the welder on on the inside edges and the outside edges um, but because it's gonna be painted I need you know I don't want metal sitting down against metal because there's no way you can get paint in there so this way it can be painted all the way around uh, I wouldn't have to weld the whole stinking seam uh, anyway this is how I do that aspect of it so I'm gonna cut this thing out next um, I'm probably not going to film that. I filmed enough of me standing over my plasma cutter. Um, anyway, fire up the plasma cutter, whack this thing out, and then I'll show you how we put it all together. All right, got my two by two frame. I uh, got some three quarter inch uh, just stickers as well. I'm using them for. I'm just putting those down to uh, put this uh, 12 gauge somewhere in the middle of this design here. Let's flop it in, see if it works. So we are close. Um, yeah, these tabs are a little bit proud on this side. I'm just gonna take the uh, sander to them, give them a little buzz. Just like that. All right, so um, I'm going to clean it now, especially this piece before I weld the bejeebers out of it. So I'm going to get all the burrs off the backside, uh, sand it down real nice. Then I'm going to weld these uh, inside joints, and then I'll take a wire wheel to it and clean it again, and uh, pretty much ready for hinges.
All right, that took about 90% uh, of it off, the slag off. Um, the reason the slag is in little certain spots, that's where that machine was the hottest, where I moved the slowest. Um, anyway, 90% of it's off of that wire wheel. And now I'm gonna take the rest of it off, plus give it a little bit of a buffing with a disc. All right, well, it's penetrating both pieces of metal. That's the key to sticking something together. All right, we got one side all welded. Uh, all these seams are welded. Uh, gonna weld the other side. The back, the front, we're not sure yet. Get rid of my stickers. So, all right, we're almost done. Uh, I've got my frame made. I've got my pattern all cut out. I got my pattern welded to my frame. I got my frame sanded. Um, last step I'm gonna do is rub my bare hand all kind of over everything uh, because a gloved hand is not gonna show you all the little burrs or anything you need to take out and your client is going to rub their bare hand. And the last thing I want is some kid crying because they discovered this little shard of metal that's sticking in their finger. Um, D and D hinges. Uh, look at that, folks. Three inches, two and a half. Um, Lots of room to weld to, galvanized, self-sealed. These are these have a bearing in there, and I don't ever have to go back and put anything in that. So, pretty darn slick, uh, kind of pricey, and very much worth it. All right, I insist if I'm going to do your gate, I'm going to put on hinges that are a adjustable and b come from this brand right here. Uh, these are D&D uh, &D hinges. Uh, I love the adjustability. I love the compatibility. I love the fact that I'm just gonna take that, center it, and weld it on there. I'm gonna go to my post. I'm gonna weld that side to the post. Uh, this is a absolute no-brainer if you're in the gate business. Do they make bigger ones? Yes, they make bigger ones. Do they make ones that offset for like an uphill swing? Yes, they make them offset for an uphill swing. Uh, a lot of times you'll be doing a gate and you're, you know, okay, the client says, you know, what kind of latch do you want? Um, really important. Uh, it all depends upon, you know, what the application is. This is a mag latch. This is also a D&D product. Um, this is a no-brainer. This is required for, at least in California, if you're by a pool, um, you basically have to pull that little thing and, and release it that way. It's lockable. Uh, the greatest thing about this thing is it's adjustable. So I can move that plate this way. Uh, I can move the handle you know, up and down uh, while I'm attaching it. Um, this is gonna go in with just some, some self-tappers, real nice self-tappers they include with it. It's got a cover for this. Uh, I have never had one of these fail. I've been putting them in for a long time. A, they are up to code. Uh, if this was a pool gate, um, there's a couple things. Uh, it would pass code. I have no opening bigger than two inches. Um, it would not pass code on height. Um, it's gotta be five foot tall. And it has to have some type of a child safety latch. Hell, this is a child safety latch. 
But anyway, D and D, check them out. Uh, these are called. I forget what the number is on these are, but uh, they're badass. These are the best hinges in the world, and I haven't found a company better. Um, they're readily available. Uh, I get them shipped to me in a couple days. Um, you know, the mag latch. I know the mag latch is about 60 bucks. I got it from the Amazon jungle. Uh, these I get from a regular welding supplier. Uh, I think it's about 60 bucks for the pair. It's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. All right, I'm spacing uh, my hinges. So I'm pretty much in the center of uh, my gate. I want to come down the same amount. So basically what I do is I, I put one on and then I measure how far down I am. It's real important that I just tack this. Don't just weld it. It's going to move on you. Now it's not going anywhere. So I've got, you know, that's a good three eighths into pretty thin wall. Give the welder a few more pixies. Concentrating my flow on the thicker metal. Okay, thicker metal. The thinner metal. I'm not going to weld this all the way because this is in my way. I'm going to take it apart. So the top of the hinge is six and a half inches down. Somewhere around the hair. Countersunk, drilled, countersunk, make sure it's facing the right way. Something like that. That there? Boom, boom. 